Oh, I am so excited. They are delicious. <laughs> Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in Suzhou, China, the Venice of the East. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go explore this market that we're in. I'm gonna look for a mask. Then after this, we're gonna go eat some delicious Chinese lunch from Suzhou. So we're gonna have like soup noodles and a bunch of other dishes. And after that, we're going to the Temple Gardens. If you guys didn't know, Suzhou is famous for their gardens. There's lots of gardens here and Temple Gardens is one of the most famous that we have to see. Okay, I hope I can find a mask. Yeah, it's it's going to be hard. I hope you, you can find a <laughs> mask. Okay, let's go explore this market. Yeah. So this vendor actually has these masks, but this is like to wear. I mean, I don't see myself putting this on my wall though. It's more like just like put it on, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> How do I look, good? I don't, I'm not going to take it. I, I, that's not what I want. I mean, I want a real mask. To say stay there, store over five years. How much? Fifty. Five zero. Twenty, twenty. Twenty, no. <laughs> He's selling each one for twenty, which is like... <laughs> twenty, no. <laughs> twenty, yeah, three bucks each. He wants to sell, he wants to sell it to me for ten dollars for three. Nah, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. So the flower blooming spring is the peony. It, it is something something different, you know? Because if I can't put a mask, I can put this, like something beautiful, you know? Pretty and successful. So in a way, it's a, a, like a good luck charm having this on your wall, like good yeah. luck. Yeah. I negotiated with him. He started like at 250, I got it done to 100. And I'm gonna put this in a, a centerpiece on my wall because it means good luck. Basically, it's good fortune. 100, right? 100. I didn't find the mask, but I found yeah. this, right? So different color. I like it. Good carving. So It better it better not break on me. Good quality, right? Yeah. My friend. Okay. Okay. Shishi. <laughs> Shishi. Very good deal because that's the handmade, not the machine. Uh, because next time, next year, come here, know this street. <laughs> no way. Mm. That's sad. Thank you, thank you. So everything's on sale because they're gonna make a parking lot in this area and this street's not gonna exist anymore. Basically because everything's on sale, she like, literally she goes, this is 150, I'll give it to you for 30. And for 30, I mean five bucks, this is something really cool for my, for my wife. My wife will love this, like a little gown. I think she's gonna love this. So that side, it's everything's on sale because they're gonna, they're gonna tear it down. Over here, it's fine. But that was a good deal. Hey, she, she, I bought for 30? For 30. How many pieces? I bought one piece for 30. I gave her 50. She goes, I keep, here's one more. I'm like, oh my God, okay, okay. <laughs> we just hopped in the car because the restaurant we were going to is completely full. It's Saturday today and all the good restaurants have long lines. We're going to another super famous noodle house and she told me she just called and made a reservation. So by the time we get there in 20 minutes, we'll be fine. I mean, this is how it is in China. Like, good places get packed really fast. Obviously, there's 6 million people in the city. And that's 6 million only in the center of the city. Xiao Bianzi. Xiao Bianzi. And what's Xiao Bianzi? Uh, little the pigtail. <laughs> okay. Because the, uh, the boss, uh, he's the special here, have little pigtail. Every local people know the Xiao Bianzi. <laughs> um, here we are. This is the number one famous soup noodle restaurant in Suzhou. And as you can see, the restaurant is like one huge dining hall, and the owner is this guy right here, the chef. And he basically, when you order the specialty noodle, it's 98 yen, so like almost 20 bucks. When you order that noodle, so it comes to your table, and he like basically just like does like some stuff. He just like flip flops it, mixes it up, mixes it with the soup. I mean, it looks incredible. I'm gonna get that noodle. I'm probably gonna get some other dishes like everybody else is having. They have a lot of like vegetable dishes. They have like some vegetables, they have some mushrooms, they have soups, they have dry noodles. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Where are you from? America. Oh, America. <laughs> this for me? Yeah. What? 
They gave us this massive, massive table in this private room. I mean, this is for like 20 people. Yeah, you know, the first small plate is the slice of the ginger. Okay. Then wow. this is the eel, filled eel. Oh, the best, the best. That's the shelled shrimp with the chicken, walnut, some dishes. Oh, yeah. um, a spicy one. Oh, perfect. That's the mushroom. And the mushroom, awesome. Oh, I am so excited. So the shrimp and the crab are from the two famous lakes in, in, in Shuzhou. And these noodles look so good. And it's actually more like a dry noodle. It's not soup, hers is soup. They are delicious. <laughs> delicious. Mmm. Super thin noodles. I love the seafood taste to it. It's so good. I have to get some of the stuff on the bottom though. There's where all the shrimp and crab is. Mmm, crab meat. Wow. Yummy, yummy. I really like the shrimp here. The shrimp here is so different. It's freshwater shrimp. Mmm. Very tiny shrimp. Grab me throughout. I'll tell you, this is probably one of the best noodles bowls in the world. In the world. Like, it's so incredible. Also remember, it's okay to slurp in this culture. It's actually like, it's improper to like, not slurp, so. Mm. So I got some ginger. Mm. Mix it in. Mmm. It's a really big bowl. Like really big. And the appetizers we have it after. Amazing. We like pork, but but we're in Suzhou. And Suzhou is all about the you know the food from the canal and the lakes, so Mm. I love these little baby shrimp. That's the fresh one, wild one. So it's the baby, tiny one. I really can't get the shrimp at the bottom, so I'm gonna use my soup spoon and just dig in. Oh my god, look at that. Mm. They're very generous with the portions. A lot of noodles, lots of shrimp. Look how many shrimp there is. I actually like freshwater shrimp more than saltwater fish because it's a lot easier. They almost never come with the shells. They give them to you, they're tiny. I mean, and even the fried ones are amazing. So I want this. The spice, spicy shrimp. Yeah. Mmm. Not so dry too. Oh, wow. So it's shrimp, it's peanuts. What else is in here? Some pork? I think it's chicken pork, chicken meat. <laughs> This is better than this. Really? No, no, no. This is one of my favorite <coughs> Chinese appetite. <coughs> oh, it's spicy. It's very spicy. It's so good. It's crunchy. There's pieces of chicken, pieces of pork, some shrimp. We also have some uh, cashews in here. This food is like orgasmic. <laughs> so the Shizhou dialect say the food is very yummy, yummy. We say. Ah, ah, Excellent. Next up, I'm gonna try some of the eel. <laughs> I don't know how the eel is gonna surpass that one in amazingness. That one was just so tasty. I eat everything. You eat everything. Well, today you're not eating eel because I'm eating it all. <laughs> <laughs> A little crunchy. It's like almost like they uh, they fried it, but it didn't, right? No bones, so it feels more like fish. And the sauce is very light. It's fantastic. Last time I tried the mushroom. Oh wow. Mm. Super fresh mushrooms, very moist. Mm. I'm done. I'm done. That was an amazing experience. I mean, the best restaurant, you got the chef flipping the noodles and they're just so good. So good. Sujo, the food here, I'll say it, better than Shanghai. Thank you very much. <laughs> the, the Shanghainese are gonna hate me. 
And next up, we're going to the temple, temple garden. Uh, North Temple Pagoda. This is the pagoda is the highest one in Shuzhou, height about 76 meters, built in the Three Kingdom period. Unfortunately, this pagoda, we're not allowed to go to the top. When I went to Xi'an, I went to the top of all the pagodas. This one, they were telling me like a decade ago it was possible, but now they closed it because obviously they don't want to like have too many tourists going in, up and down, up and down. I mean, they really want to preserve it, which I completely understand, but I like going to the top and I like the view. <laughs> <laughs> Why I suggest this? Because this time is for free. Maybe next time I should uh, take the money. All free. All free. Future next year, all free. Okay. Ni hao. Ni hao. The big belly, uh, we see the good fortune, and the big ear is longevity. So we say, if you learn from the loving Buddha, you are all content, everything content. Let me rub his belly. No, I'm joking. This is the two statue is the temple god, named Heng Ha Er Jiang, Er two person. The temple god protect the temple safety and peace. Incredible. Burning incense for healthy, wealthy, good luck forever. Thank you. In some the South Asia temple, they all like to offer the flower, but in China, and the people just burning incense or burning the candles make the wish. So when we enter, we got three incense. Burn them up. Go here. Put them down. You can put it anywhere. <laughs> That's hot there. I almost burned my hand. The loving Buddha always smiling to everybody. He loving the funny people in the world. That's a massive laughing Buddha. Massive. And it's right in front of the pagoda. And next to it, it has a bunch of different rocks. What, what's the purpose of the rocks? Uh, tai Hu rock. Tai Hu, okay. You, you eat the shell, the shrimp, or from that lake. Okay, so rock from the lake. Okay. Wow, very fresh here. That's a massive Buddha. He's usually like 20 feet tall and super fat. I mean, back in the days, if you were super fat, that means you were rich. <laughs> and right behind the Buddha, we have the pagoda. It's a nine-story pagoda. The North Temple Pagoda has about 1,700 years. So what century? Third century? Yeah. Pagoda is a symbol for the Buddha's body. So we make the circle. Uh, one is for study, second for the for your job, the third for your life. Three times. Okay, let's go around three times. I have time. We did it once, so what does that mean? Yeah, for good for study. For good study? Yeah. I'm not studying anymore, so. <laughs> then for your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David, the good wishes for you and your family. So basically we completed the three rounds and then she had to stand here right in the front and make like a, I guess like a prayer in a way, saying like, you know, we did it. Bring us good fortune. <laughs> okay. The moon gate mean perfect because like the the temple, I want everybody have the perfect life. You are successful for your life. We finish the temple parts, then next we will to the garden parts. So that means temple garden. Special carving tablets built in the Yuan Dynasty. In this area, have the emperor named Zhang Shichen. So this described during his time, he protect the people, uh, have, let the people have a good life. So the people have a big the memorial for him. So make this carving for this huge the brick to here. This brick is massive. So much detail here. These look like. Yeah. Who are these guys? I mean, this emperor Zhang Shichen. That's the emperor right there. Yeah. Okay, and then we have on top like the top of the temple. Oh, so like the protecting. paradise on top, people protecting him. So I guess basically like, angels on top. That's a massive brick. One piece. They carved all that. It's incredible what they did back then. It really is. We're now gonna enter the gardens. Yeah. Oh, we spent about 45 minutes walking around the temple. <laughs> now another 45 minutes in the gardens. Wow, the oxygen here, the air, the quality of air here is amazing. If you come here in the autumn, like the middle of the 
an autumn season to hear lots of the acacia flower blooming, very fragrant. As you can see, it's a big pond, lots of koi fish, there's some huge fish. Is that tarp? The big fish? The huge fish? It looks like tarp. And then right here we have a beautiful stone bridge. Very small, like very tiny. Six steps and you're over. I love these bridges because it really shows you what this place was like back then. How they would create these bridges and they all look like they're like one big slab, you know? And it's very little steps, you know, four or five steps and the bridge. The, the way this garden is structured is that there's a lot of hills in it. And so you have to go up either like these rocky stairs or you find a path that takes you up. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is a different type of garden. The other garden we visited earlier today was very unique and very spread out and more of like a house. This is not a house. This is a garden next to a temple. So no one lived here. More nature. So this part of the basic garden is basically like a big pond. In the middle, you have this like piece of the rock that goes up. So you have this advantage point, as you can see. Over there, you have like a little house. So a great view from there of where we are now and the pond. And that's it. What we're going to do now is we're going to finish up here and then go to the other side of the gardens. Follow us. Two, and that side also the, the gate, like a vase, so meaning pronounced like a pin, piece. So this is like a, a vase-shaped door. It's, it's really amazing here in China how you see these doors in all these gardens and temples. You see these incredible doors. It's like they really took the time to design something unique and not just a regular rectangle. Guan Yin Ho, Guan Yin Di, Guan Yin Ho. Female Buddha Guan Yin, the Mercy Buddha's home. And that's right here? Yeah, that one. Now we're entering the next part of the gardens. And as we're entering, this is actually the oldest part here in the garden, this gate. They offer the flowers because they say Buddhists think when you offer the flower for the Buddha, uh, you will become more beautiful, elegant, forever. I need flowers. <laughs> I, need to, I need to give him flowers. This part of the gardens is like a massive terrace. This is the building we just came through and over here to our right we have the pagoda and that's basically it. It's just a little bit of trees here, two different uh, buildings and this one that we came through actually has a ginormous golden Buddha and we can't take photos unfortunately because it's antique and it says photos forbidden and one thing in China I'll tell you, never go against what they tell you. If they say you can't take photos, you don't take photos. But yeah guys, I hope you loved the day. We ate some delicious food. Well, we started off by buying some stuff. I got something cool for my house. It's gonna like bring my family more success. And, uh, and then after that, yeah, exactly, exactly. After that we went, we had like incredible noodles. Like some of the best noodles I've ever had. Nice with shrimp and crab meat. And I love how the master, the chef just goes in there and he puts it together and he really gives you like a, you know, like a performance, like a little spectacle there in the middle. And it's only, you can only do that if you buy the good noodles or the, you know, the special noodles, right? 98 yen, which is not bad. It's like $15, but definitely worth it. Some of the best noodles ever. I mean, I might be biased because I love shrimp and uh, shrimp and crab, but <laughs> then after that, we came here to this incredible temple garden. I mean, walking through the temple, seeing the pagoda, walking around the pagoda is like a must do. Then going into the gardens, seeing the gardens, coming out here. I mean, it's a great experience. And this is like one of the top attractions here in Suzhou, so you have to do it. Well, guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Suzhou, China. Peace.